You're watching Good Morning Suncoast at 6. Coming up, we'll have President Trump's latest comments on Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh amid an expanding FBI investigation. Plus, we'll hear from a man who's sharing his survival story after a deadly mass shooting last month in Cincinnati. And it's official now, red tide has surfaced on Florida's east coast. Good morning, Suncoast starts right now. Good morning, everybody. I'm Ray Collins. Stephanie Webb is off today. It is Tuesday, October the 2nd. Glad you're with us. John Scalzi now has a preview of what you should expect weather-wise today. Well, we're going to have a sunny start again today, Ray, and that'll help boost our temperatures up pretty rapidly into the 80s from the 70s where they are now. We have some cloud cover out in Gulf waters, which really won't bother us, but it is an indication of a little bit more moisture across the region that'll help bring us a few more showers. Satellite view quiet right now across our area. So is radar, but you can see the showers already starting over on the other coast. We'll talk about how that impacts our weather this afternoon in just a few. All right, thank you, John. 301 northbound, some congestion as you approach State Road 70. 301 also around Newtown, some issues there as well. And then checking our final map to the south, we'll find out that the South County area has uh, nothing major to report as of 6 o'clock on your Tuesday morning. New developments now out of Washington, where President Trump says he admits he was surprised to hear some things about Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh. ABC's Emily Raw explains why the White House is also giving the green light to an expanded FBI investigation. At a campaign rally in Tennessee, President Trump blasted Democrats, accusing them of trying to destroy Brett Kavanaugh. They're trying to destroy a very fine person, and we can't let it happen. But earlier in the day, the president reversing his initial order, strictly limiting the scope of the new investigation. Are you saying your White House has put no limitations on... No, my White House is doing whatever the senators want. No, no. You who they understand. should interview. My White House will do whatever the senators want. Overnight, the New York Times reporting Kavanaugh was questioned by police after a bar fight in 1985, accused of throwing ice at another patron. Press Secretary Sarah Sanders calling the story ridiculous on Twitter. This as more people who claim to know Kavanaugh come forward, like Leslie Martin Ragsdale, a classmate at Yale Law. You can't be mad or not vote for someone for Supreme Court justice because they drank in high school, but he's lying that that he did it legally. And late Monday, Republican Senator Jeff Flake, who forced the delay and supplemental FBI investigation, getting a warm welcome in New Hampshire, encouraging Americans to reach across the aisle. Tribalism is ruining us. It is tearing our country apart. The only tribe to which any of us owes allegiance is the American tribe. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says there will be a full Senate vote on Judge Kavanaugh's confirmation this week. It is not clear at this point whether Republicans have the votes they need. Emily Rao, ABC News, Washington. Happening today, Stormy Daniels' tell-all book is hitting bookshelves across the country. The memoir is called Full Disclosure. It'll detail her encounter with President Trump. She says she's worked, out, worked on this book now for 10 years. Daniel said she had a sexual encounter with President Trump back in 2006, but he has repeatedly denied that allegation. For the latest on this story and breaking news and the forecast, check out our app. It's under WWSB or under My Suncoast. If you have a smartphone, you'll get an alert from the federal government tomorrow. Everybody around the country will get an alert at the same time when FEMA conducts a test of the National Wireless Emergency Alert System. It'll happen at 2.18 p.m. East Coast time, and you'll see the words presidential alert on your phone screen. FEMA says the test will allow them to determine if improvements are needed. Caught on camera, a video that's gone viral on social media showing an employee at a Syracuse Dunkin' Donuts dumping water on a homeless man who was sleeping inside the restaurant. Jeremy Young is the man seen uh, getting water dumped on him. His family is very upset about this. A GoFundMe account has been created to replace the property that he had damaged right there. Dunkin' Donuts says they'll get in touch with Young to apologize. No word yet if the employee who did it is in hot water. A somber vigil last night in Las Vegas where thousands marked the first anniversary of the deadliest single-day mass shooting in modern U.S. history. The lights on the Vegas Strip were dimmed just after 10 p.m. in honor of the 58 victims. This was one of several ceremonies throughout the day. The names of all the victims were read at this one. That lone gunman opened fire from a Mandalay Bay hotel suite onto a crowd of concert goers below. 
After a year-long investigation, police still don't know what drove the attacker Angela to Dole. carry out this tragic massacre. We're hearing this morning from a survivor of a deadly shooting last month at a bank in Cincinnati. As reporter Tom McKee tells us, the man feels sorry for the gunman. It happened quickly on September 6th. Omar Perez walked into the lobby of the Fifth Third Center downtown and opened fire. Brian Sarver, the first person shot, was meeting there with Richard Newcomer and other contractors he supervised. I felt something hit me. It didn't knock me down. I, I actually didn't even really feel pain from it at first. It was more trying to figure out what was going on. Sarver and Newcomer, who was also shot, quickly got out of harm's way by diving down a staircase into the loading dock area. Both men were rushed to UC Medical Center. Sarver was hit once in the lower left side and the bullet passed through his body. My spleen ended up being hit in, in that, that uh, shot and ultimately I had to have emergency surgery to have my spleen removed. The past few weeks have been a time of reflection for Sarver and his wife Lisa. There's the question of why he lived and others didn't. There's also the wonder about why Perez shot him once, shot Whitney Austin 12 times, and then killed Luis Calderon, newcomer, and Prithvi Raj Kandepi. I feel sorry for him. I mean, obviously his family is suffering just the same as others. He, he was killed that day. Um, I wish it wouldn't have happened. But Sarver says it's fairly clear Perez was dealing with some sort of mental health issues. There's, there's obviously just something going on there that was wrong within his, his mind to, to ha have him do that. I got to believe that no one would ever really in their right mind want to do something like that to other people. Sarver and his wife sat down with their three young children to discuss what happened. We've tried to talk to them and explain to them that obviously in this world there are, there's good and evil. And um, we always just pray for protection over our whole family every day. And, I, you know, again, I try to look at the positive sides of, of this that, I, you know, I wasn't killed. Um, it could have been much worse. That's reporter Tom McKee reporting. Looking ahead to till tomorrow in downtown Sarasota. Police here will host Coffee with a Cop again. It'll be at Pastry Art on Main Street east of Lemon from 8 to 10 a.m. Officers will be on hand to answer any questions or discuss any concerns within the city of Sarasota. New this morning, we're learning more about a fatal boat accident off Lido Key that killed a local college student last weekend. Florida Fish and Wildlife says that Margaret Murray was in the water Saturday afternoon when she was injured by the propeller of a 27-foot pontoon boat. She died on Sunday. She was attending Lecom School of Dental Medicine in Bradenton. She was just 22 years old. Very sad story there. The FWC is now confirming that red tide has reached the east coast of Florida. Beaches were closed there on Monday after several beach goers reported feeling sick over the weekend. Test results from the FWC have confirmed red tide is to blame for respiratory issues there. The last time I feel like it was this empty was like during the hurricane when we came and the whole island was shut down, so very weird. FWC has reported red tide in the East Coast only eight times since the 1950s with side effects usually lasting for a shorter period of time than on the West Coast. But for months, red tide, of course, has plagued our side from Naples to Clearwater killing hundreds of tons of marine life. Look at this video now from uh, Manatee County. Florida Fish and Wildlife is investigating a shark found off of Holmes Beach yesterday. A viewer sent us this video as the shark struggled in shallow water. The shark died a short time later. The officer that removed it thinks it was a, a black tip shark. The cause of death is not yet known. Getting back to our Red Tide coverage, you can find out all your answers right there and our special coverage of Red Tide at mysuncoast.com. Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast right now, the U.S., Mexico, and Canada have reached a new trade deal that you know, but we'll take a closer look today at how this could impact your wallet next time you go to the supermarket. And next half hour, a look at who the Democrats have chosen to replace the late April Freeman in the 17th Congressional District race. We'll have that story next, but first, here's a look at your U.S. Capitol. We're at 67 degrees there right now. We are five weeks away to the day from the midterm elections. Lots of folks will be watching the Capitol between now and then. 609 right now as far as the beach forecast. Here's John Scalzi. It'll be another warm one today with temperatures topping 90 and the feels like temperature over 100. So you may want to spend time at the beach. If you do, it'll be 87 with a UV index of 10. The red tide index uh, looks pretty good today. According to Moat Marine spotters later in the afternoon yesterday found that many of the beaches had no red tide irritant in the air, according to observers with their feet 
on the sand at those beaches. Complete forecast in a second. Soldiers in the Army National Guard live up to a set of time-honored principles. I will always finish first. They stand ready to respond to any crisis. I will never accept defeat. They serve in their communities as citizens and as soldiers. I will never quit. They train part-time to be ready to serve at all times. I will never leave a fallen comrade. Learn more at NationalGuard.com. Picking out a new ceiling fan? That's a do-it-yourself. Installing your new ceiling fan? No. That's a don't do it yourself. For ceiling fans, rewires, or anything electrical, play it safe. And call on the trained electricians from your locally owned Mr. Sparky. It's no accident that so many of our customers are repeat customers. Thank you. You Trust Mr. Sparky for all your electrical repairs. Eight Sparky. Blue 32! Blue 32! Ha ha! It's the Ghetto Gridiron Challenge! The game's on to sell 2,000 vehicles. 12 teams compete for the number one spot. Score a great deal at every Ghetto dealership. Buy with zero down. Make no payments for 90 days. Choose from 14 of your favorite brands all on sale. Who will make it to the end zone? You decide. Rush to a Ghetto location near you or visit Ghetto.com. Ghetto's got it. Runs as art. You know the name. You know the building. But do you know what's inside? Yes, Rugs as Art is Florida's number one area rug superstore. But there is so much more. Amazing furniture, accessories, and art. All this and more. Come see for yourself. You'll love our personal touch and be pleasantly surprised by our affordable prices. Rugs as Art and more. There is so much more to explore. I heard about the Detoli Cancer Center through friends of mine who had been treated here and were very pleased with the treatment. If there is prostate cancer, we at the Detoli Cancer Center will find it using 3D color flow Doppler ultrasound. Mm -hmm. And that helped precisely identify where my cancer was. I can tell you that you will not find a finer, more professional team of clinicians anywhere in the world. We answered the call of duty and left our homes to serve in far off lands. Now we answer another call, this time at home, in our own communities, to respond in times of chaos, to use our strength, our skills, and our experiences to bring hope amid devastation and destruction. Together, as a team of brothers and sisters, we're continuing our mission to make this country a little stronger and a little better each day. We are Team Rubicon. ABC 7 First Alert Weather Forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. 76 degree air temperature, 2.75. East northeast wind coming in at about 6. The easterly component of the wind is something that is not going to change. We are locked into that wind direction right straight through the weekend. We're looking at that uh, wind direction basically bringing us another warm day here on the Sun Coast. Well, that combined with other factors taking us to a temperature that's solidly in the 90s again today with a feels like temperature cracking the 100 mark. Along with that, though, comes a little bit of a chance of rainfall today, a little bit better than 24 hours ago because of some moisture that's worked its way into the forecast. So by 3 p.m., there may be a few of the showers that we see over on the other coast making it into our area. I don't think we'll see any heavy rain. We don't see any large downpours that will provide us with you know, good rainfall totals in the bucket. But at least we'll have a little bit of extra cloud cover around later in the day that may help to break the heat for a brief period of time. We won't have as many hours of temperatures in the 90s as we had yesterday, I don't think. So if you look at the water vapor imagery here, which shows you swirls and motions in the atmosphere, the little eddies and vortices in the, in the air, it also shows you where the moisture is, indicated by turquoise, and where it is not, indicated by these tan colors. You can see that yesterday's tan colors, dry air, which was all over the center part of the state of Florida, is slowly being replaced today by a little bit of moisture, those turquoise colors. Another way to look at that is our water vapor imagery, which, or rather our um, precipitable water imagery, which shows you 
the amount of moisture that's in the air from the surface all the way up to the tip of the sky. And here, redder is wetter. So as we put it into motion, you'll see some of that wet air kind of rotating around the area, bringing us that chance of rainfall today. But tomorrow, look, we're right back to those cooler colors of dry air, which means that uh, our rain chances go down again tomorrow. Thursday, another slug of humid air works its way closer to us and enhances our rainfall chances. So this is a kind of a little bit of a roller coaster ride in terms of rainfall chances over the next several days. High pressure. Again, off the uh, eastern seaboard brings us this easterly wind flow. So the direction of motion of the storms that do occur are going to be the same as they were over the last several days. Mostly sunny skies to start. Few afternoon clouds building warm again today. And then those few scattered afternoon showers. Two places we watch in the tropics. One, Leslie. Probably going to be a hurricane. Absolutely no issue for us here in the state of Florida. And disturbance number one. Chance of formation here over two days. Zero. But over the five day period, as it drifts off to the north and to the west, up toward the uh, western parts of the Caribbean, there may be some development here and we'll have to watch it. It could lift north and put itself into Gulf waters. So we'll keep an eye on it. Some computer models suggest that there will be some development there. But as I mentioned, the chances are small. East wind coming in at about 5 to 10 today, turning to the east this afternoon and increasing in intensity. Two foot seas, moderate chop on your bay and inland waters. And the forecast, looking at a daytime high today in the low 90s, 30% chance of showers. It'll be dry tomorrow. Again, a rain chance as another slug of moisture comes our way on Thursday with a 40% chance. And then as we head into the weekend, we dry out a little bit before returning to that slight chance of rain showers as we head into the beginning of next work week. Right. All right. Thank you, John. Checking the roads right now. First alert traffic checking all clear so far in Manatee County. Checking farther south. Here is the scene in northern Sarasota County. An issue there on 301 northbound as you head through the, the, uh, the Newtown area. And then checking finally our map to the south. We'll see some build up there on 41 southbound after you get past the bypass around South Venice. On to consumer news, a new trade deal is in place now for the U.S., Canada and Mexico. Reporter Natasha Chen explains why this could affect the price we pay for dairy, chicken and wheat. Throughout the campaign, I promised to renegotiate NAFTA and today we have kept that promise. President Donald Trump says the newly named United States-Mexico-Canada agreement, USMCA, is the largest U.S. trade deal ever made. The agreement came together hours before the October 1st deadline. There were a number of moments when the thing could have died. They kept picking it up, kept pressing the case. The deal requires 40 to 45 percent of auto content be made by workers earning at least $16 an hour. The most advanced protections for workers ever and requires more of a vehicle's parts to be made in North America in order for the car to be free from tariffs. Automaker Ford says it's very encouraged by this, quote, the benefits of scale and global reach will help to drive volume and support manufacturing jobs. Dairy was a deal breaker. In a win for the U.S., the deal will also open up some of Canada's dairy market to U.S. farmers that could produce better prices in the U.S. Milk, butter, cheese, yogurt and ice cream. This deal must be signed by Congress within 60 days, a Congress that could include a Democratic-controlled House after midterm elections. There could be Democratic support for this. There's a lot of things worked into these agreements with Mexico and Canada that are very helpful to workers and labor unions for that matter. So let's see. We might be surprised. In Washington, I'm Natasha Chen. Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen says his non-Hodgkin's lymphoma has returned. The 65-year-old was last treated for the disease in 2009. Now he's being treated again and plans to, quote, fight this aggressively. Despite his diagnosis, the billionaire says he'll stay involved with all his current projects, including his two pro sports teams that he owns. Allen co-founded Microsoft with Bill Gates back in 1975. New leading man at Instagram now, Adam Mosseri, was named CEO of the photo sharing app. There he is. He's worked at the sister company Facebook since 2008, which bought Instagram in 2012. Mosseri most recently served as Instagram's vice president of product. If you like Chipotle, 
If you like this story, the company just debuted a program that offers customers perks with every purchase, simply called Chipotle Rewards. It's a point system that gives customers 10 points for every dollar they spend. The program is only available in certain cities right now, including Phoenix, Kansas City, and Columbus, Ohio. Some good news for students applying for financial aid just got a little easier. For the first time ever, college hopefuls can fill out a free application for federal student aid on a mobile app because right now only about 60% of high school students apply for financial aid, which leaves more than $24 billion in state and federal aid on the table. That might change now that the form is available through this brand new app called My Student Aid App. Still ahead on Good Morning Suncoast. New details on that shark attack that left a 13-year-old California boy fighting for his life. What his doctors and mother are now saying about his injuries. And next half hour, the latest on a Northport High School football player recovering from a serious injury. It is 6.20 right now on this Tuesday morning. There's a shot outside our studios. Looks like downtown Sarasota is brightly lit up right now at this hour of the day. We'll have more news after this on Good Morning Suncoast. Reorganizing a space in your home? Save up to 15% on our premium finishes during the California Closets Autumn Upgrade event. Contact us today for a free design consultation. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Today, everyone is looking for carpeting that lasts longer. G Freed has you covered with Karistan. With a legacy of quality and integrity, we provide you with a huge selection of Karistan carpets with exclusive lifetime limited warranties. All installed by our highly skilled, highly knowledgeable team. Come ask us why Karistan is the best and most durable. G Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Hello, Mom. Amanda's mom's appointment just got rescheduled for today. Amanda needs right at home. Our customized care plan provides as much or as little help as her mom requires, whether it's a ride to the doctor or help around the house. Oh, of course. Tom, I am really sorry. I've got to go. Look, call right at home. Get the right care right at home. The Player Center presents the wild Broadway season opener, Annie, get your gun. There's no business like show business. This slice of magical American musical theater will thrill you with the classic tunes of Irving Berlin. Call the Player Center at 365-2494 or visit us at theplayers.org. Annie, get your gun, September 18th through October 7th. Let's go on with the show. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He really likes to be around people. And as soon as I start to make my breakfast, Hamilton is right there. I get out my mat and I'm doing a downward dog and he's underneath. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. I mean, look at this little face. I do not love him. ABC7, the Suncoast's official Florida lottery station. Reorganizing a space in your home? Save up to 15% on our premium finishes during the California Closets Autumn Upgrade event. Contact us today for a free design consultation. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Welcome back. 623 right now in New York City at this hour. All eyes are on Yankee Stadium tomorrow when they'll host the Oakland A's in a wild card playoff game. Very exciting. That's tomorrow at Yankee Stadium just across the, uh, the Hudson River there in Manhattan. Welcome back. 624 right now. New details now on that shark attack that left a 13-year-old boy fighting for his life. ABC's Will Carr has the story. 
In this morning's GMA First Look, the smile of a teenager thankful to be alive. I think Keen is a miracle, and I think that he's very, very, very strong, and he's a survivor now. Keen Webry Hayes' mom emotional after the 13-year-old survived a shark attack over the weekend. Watch the intense moments as rescuers drag the teen to shore on a kayak. I'm diving, and I hear a a guttural scream, like like a, a primal scream. Witnesses say the water was filled with blood as the 11-foot shark lurked behind the kayak, stalking the teenager and the men racing to save him. I just want to say thank you to all three of them. I, without what they did, we would be having a whole different scenario. And coming up at 7 a.m., you'll find out what Keen plans to do when he gets out of the hospital, and it may surprise you. With your GMA First Look, I'm Will Carr, ABC News, California. New Alka-Seltzer Plus Power Max Gels. Concentrated power, 25% smaller pill. Max your cold relief with Alka-Seltzer Plus. Light bladder leaks are just part of being a woman, but we can still wear whatever we want. Poise Ultra Thin Pads move with your body and stay five times drier than the leading always period pad. So life with little leaks can just be life. Get a coupon at poise.com. The places you clean the most are where the people you love the most hang out the most. The first ever Lysol Daily Cleanser. Only three ingredients and no harsh chemical residue. Lysol, what it takes to protect. George woke up in pain, but he has plans today. So he took a leave. If he'd taken Tylenol, he'd be stopping for more pills right now. Only a leave has the strength to stop tough pain for up to 12 hours with just one pill. A leave, all day strong. Ready to open up new opportunities as an electrician? Don't do it yourself. Team up with Mr. Sparky instead. We're locally owned and looking for people like you. We offer our electricians great perks that you just won't get going it alone. And whether you're an apprentice, a master electrician, or somewhere in between, we have a spot for you. Best decision I ever made. Apply online or call today. You don't have to put up with any malarkey. Call 888-8-SPARKY. Performing on stage takes mental and physical preparation. But one thing I never thought to prepare for was cervical cancer. 91% of cervical cancers are caused by the human papillomavirus, or HPV. The good news is there are vaccines that can protect you or your children from cancer. I survived my cancer, but you can stop cancer before it starts. Talk to your doctor and go to thinkaboutthelink.org to learn more. Soldiers in the Army National Guard serve to give back to their country and communities. Their part-time commitment qualifies them for an array of benefits, such as affordable health and life insurance benefits, education benefits, including tuition assistance, student loan repayment and GI Bill programs, a retirement plan based on part-time service, and VA home mortgages. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more about all the benefits available in the Army National Guard. <laughs> protection she has. Buddy up. I'm Jill Harrington. Please visit HelpSaveTheNextGirl.com and get involved. Thank you. You got a key? Go fish! It only takes a moment to make a moment. Take time to be a dad today. There's a lot of fear in coming back to school. I'm a 40-year-old man that walked in there to get his high school diploma. It was very hard for me, but one of the teachers was Miss Araceli. She gave me direction. Every single time I had a question, she'll put down whatever she's doing, and she'll sit there with you until you get it. 50% of getting your high school diploma is walking through those doors. The other 50% is doing the work. 
find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Keep up with the Sun Coast. Watch your favorite ABC7 shows on your streaming device. You're watching Good Morning Sun Coast at 6.30. Coming up, we'll tell you why protesters plan to rally outside Sarasota Police Headquarters later on today. Plus, why the death toll is expected to rise in Indonesia after a devastating earthquake and tsunami last weekend. And we'll tell you who the Democrats have chosen to replace the late April Freeman in next month's congressional race in the 17th District. Those stories, your Tuesday forecast this half hour on Good Morning Suncoast. Welcome back, 6.30 right now on this Tuesday morning, October the 2nd. I'm Ray Collins, glad you're with us. Stephanie Webb is off today. John Scalzi now has details of your Tuesday forecast. John? Thanks very much, Ray. So we're looking at a little bit of cloud cover out in golf waters, but not a lot over land. Still, it's an indication of the ribbon of moisture that's sneaking into the area and bringing up our rain chances a tad bit today. Not much in the way of any kind of cloud cover to block the sunshine, though, and we'll certainly see temperatures climb from where they are now. They range from, well, 70 degrees, says Becky in Old Mayak. I'd like to pitch a tent in her backyard with temperatures like that. And uh, Cooper in central Sarasota coming in with a temperature of 77 degrees. Few scattered showers over on the other coast bringing the uh, little bit of a rain chance to us today, about a 30% chance of that. Otherwise, temperatures generally Pretty warm out there, Ray. <laughs> right, very good, John. Sounds like camping. Half past six right now. Here's first alert traffic. Uh, 301 and State Road 70. Some congestion there. Otherwise, pretty clear in Manatee County. Checking farther south. Here's the scene in the northern half of Sarasota County. Fruitville westbound. After you get past the interstate and head toward Honoré, some congestion there. And then our final map to the south, we'll check on that and find a little bit of a buildup there on 41 southbound as you approach a Jacaranda on US 41 south. Some Sarasota residents who are upset about an arrest earlier this year plan to protest later today at Sarasota Police Headquarters. Our Marla Spence is live at the police station and we're going to have a report from her later on in this half hour. Also making news right now, developing overnight, a Northport High School football player is recovering from some injuries, some serious injuries that he sustained last weekend during a football game. This is a picture of Northport High School football player Wendy Renoir being wheeled off the game during the uh, uh, match of the game last weekend versus Lakewood Ranch. He suffered a uh, fracture of two vertebrae in his neck. He was covering a kickoff when he made a head-on tackle. Now, fortunately, he does feel a movement in all of his extremities and will not require surgery. He's doing good. He's home now. Um, um, sore. Um, you know, he's going to have a, rec a long recovery in front of him, but he's definitely, um, he's, he's, he's lucky. Get well, bro. I'm praying for you and uh, hope you get well soon. We wish him the, w the best as well. By the way, Northport did go on to win that football game. Overseas now, rescue teams in Indonesia are continuing to search for survivors under debris and destruction after a devastating earthquake and tsunami last weekend. Over 1,200 people now are confirmed dead, and that number is still expected to rise. Reporter Matt Rivers has the latest. Rescuers think there's a body in here and believe it should be found. They don't mind crashing through the rubble to search because the house was already gone. Around the corner, another search, a tarp laid in case they find someone. They don't, but these guys did. To add to a climbing death toll after a massive earthquake followed by a tsunami flattened this part of Sulawesi. If you lived here, you'd be lucky if you weren't hurt, even if you lost everything you own. That's what happened to many of these people, airport refugees awaiting a government evacuation. Most try to leave because they've got nothing left. Even some with homes intact get out. People are trying to get stuff from my house, so I need to get the kids out of here. People are looting. Um, people are stealing things. They're trying to rope us. <laughs> For those that remain behind, the conditions are horrific. We visited a hospital that set up an outdoor ward because post-quake, patients were scared to go back inside. The injured fill beds, soaked in sweat, covered in flies. It's where we meet Puteri Pratiwi. She was riding a motorbike with her cousin, her best friend, when the tsunami hit. She lived. Her cousin didn't. At first I shouted, she says, Ita, Ita, where are you? She didn't respond. In the beginning, I thought she would survive. 
but then my family found out she was dead. The stories of trauma are as common as they are awful. We meet this bandaged seven-year-old a few minutes later. He was with his mom and little brother when the wave hit. They were swept away and haven't been seen since. He says he sees a black shadow. That's what he said. I think it's him remembering his mother and brother. Officially, they're missing. In all likelihood, they're gone. So what does a poor town do when the bodies keep piling up and there's nowhere to put them? This town is so inundated with death that the morgue is completely overwhelmed. The only space left for many of the bodies is here in the parking lot outside the emergency room. Some of these have been outside exposed for three days now. 130 remain. The only solution to prevent the spread of disease is to strip the dignity of a proper goodbye. Mass burials started Monday, a thankless task performed by a military already spread too thin. They'll continue Tuesday and maybe after that as long as people keep searching and finding what nobody wants to find. Matt River, CNN, Palu, Indonesia. Some Sarasota residents upset about an arrest earlier this year plan to protest later today at Sarasota Police Headquarters. Our Marla Spence has a live preview now from outside the police station near Payne Park. Marla? Hey, Ray, protesters will be here later today for what they call a night out against police brutality in Sarasota. Those protesters will be here at the police uh, headquarters to highlight two incidents that happened in Newtown almost seven months ago. Now, those protesters are pushing for justice for Chad Washington and Jeremy Trebles following their arrest back in March and April. The group says Washington was tased by Sarasota police, but officers say when he was on spice and he was punching and biting them when they arrived to the scene. Now the other incident happening back in April is when police say they approached Jeremy Trebles in his car. He then went into reverse and that's when an officer fired shots into the car. The group is calling for the firing of officer Brandon Vermillion. The officer involved in both cases just back in May activists rallied these same incidents and met with Sarasota's police complaint committee. That meeting revealed that there was an internal investigation and it was found that all of the Sarasota police officers acted appropriately in both cases. But still those protesters will be voicing their concerns and out here protesting later on tonight at six o'clock reporting live at in Sarasota Marla Spence for ABC 7, your Suncoast News. Thank you, Marla. Democratic Party leaders in the 17th Congressional District have chosen a candidate now to run in next month's election after April Freeman's sudden death last week. This is Alan Ellison of Highlands County. He is the chairman of the Center for Economic and Policy Development. Now, Freeman's name will still appear on the ballot, but signs will be placed on polling places about the rules of the vote. Those with mail-in ballots will also get a note that explains that Ellison will inherit any of Freeman's votes. Ellison now will now run against State Senator Greg Stubbe in the election, which is five weeks from today. Now, when it comes to the elections, you can get a head start right now. Sarasota and Manatee have their sample ballots online. This is especially useful for non-English speakers because on election day there won't be any Spanish ballots and early voters won't get Spanish ballots either. There was a lawsuit to try to change that, but it didn't play out in time. For information on how to find these sample ballots, you can search for a story on our website, mysuncoast.com. Two inmates already in state prison have new warrants for their arrest for crimes committed in 15 counties, including Sarasota and Manatee. The charges against Roland Hartridge and Juan Jose Sapig came from stolen goods at more than 30 Home Depot stores. Florida law enforcement officers began investigating after a call from Home Depot's corporate investigator regarding the suspected thefts. Agents say between March and May of 2017, both men were involved in more than 70 fraudulent transactions using various schemes at the store. And due to the number of counties involved, their cases will be prosecuted by the Attorney General's office. Happening tonight, Northport Police are hosting their National Night Out event. It's from 6 to 8.30 at Northport City Hall. The event is part of a nationwide effort for residents to get out to know their, their officers, their neighbors, and also local business owners as well. Selby Gardens is looking to its future while also protecting its past. The Gardens is planning a $67 million construction project that will include a five-story parking garage on top, a five-story uh, parking garage with a restaurant on top, but administrators are also protecting the Gardens' history. City commissioners last night granted a local historic designation to the Selby Home, 
where William and Marie Selby lived back in the 1920s. This designation protects the site, so changes in the future to the structure would need to be reviewed by the Historic Preservation Board. The Selby House is really a focal point of Selby Gardens history, and I think it's an important tenant of Selby Gardens undertaking to pre preserve its history and also protect its future. The Selbys first came to Sarasota from West Virginia in 1921, and the house was built in 1922, just a few years before the Great Depression, and it's still being used today as a cafe and a meeting place. Beautiful building right there. Still ahead on Good Morning Sun Coast, after taking time off after her father's passing, we'll tell you what Senator John McCain's daughter will do now about coming back to The View on ABC. And how about a free trip to Puerto Rico? We'll tell you how songwriter Lynn manuel Miranda is bringing a lucky fan to, to Puerto Rico to see him reprise his role in Hamilton. How about that? I know one guy that wouldn't mind seeing that. We'll talk to him next. First, there's a peek outside at the uh, from our tower camera high above the Rosemary District. How about seeing Hamilton, John Scalzi? Yeah, that would be nice to see him in that show, would it not? I mean, he's a spectacular actor, no doubt about it, and you know, a brilliant, uh, brilliant musician as well. No rain box check today, even though we do have a better chance of seeing the rain showers, I think, in the forecast. Um, the reason for that is I don't think there'll be heavy enough downpours of rain to really interfere with your drive time forecast, although we do have a chance of seeing an isolated storm a little bit later in the day. Across the region, uh, airport hubs serving the uh, Sarasota International Airport all running on time, according to the FAA. Your forecast in a minute. Reorganizing a space in your home? Save up to 15% on our premium finishes during the California Closets Autumn Upgrade event. Contact us today for a free design consultation. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Blue 32, Blue 32, ha ha! It's the Ghetto Gridiron Challenge. The game's on to sell 2,000 vehicles. 12 teams compete for the number one spot. Score a great deal at every Ghetto dealership. Buy with zero down. Make no payments for 90 days. Choose from 14 of your favorite brands all on sale. Who will make it to the end zone? You decide. Rush to a Ghetto location near you or visit Ghetto.com. Ghetto's got it. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. We, we just, just finished, finished dinner, dinner and, and it was time, time for homework. homework. He I hates hate homework. homework. It makes no sense. I don't know how he finds anything in his backpack. I can't find my backpack. I couldn't even read his handwriting. Holding the pencil makes my hand hurt. I know he's bright. Why is it so hard for me? He's I'm just trying as try hard as I harder. can. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. Go to understood.org, a free online resource with support and tools to help your child thrive. The skills you develop as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you a head start on your career. Gain practical experience with technology and equipment that will give you a leg up in the civilian world. Learn critical leadership skills and to be part of a team. Serve your community and your country part-time while earning money for an education. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn about the paid training and career opportunities available to you in the Army National Guard. We believe in patriotism. We believe in our country. For 100 years, veterans have been impacting our nation through the American Legion. Learn more at legion.org slash we believe. Reorganizing a space in your home? Save up to 15% on our premium finishes during the California Closets Autumn Upgrade event. Contact us today for a free design consultation. Visit our showroom or online at californiaclosets.com. Now your ABC7 First Alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. 76 degree air temperature, dew point value pretty close to that at 75. We have an east-northeast wind coming in at about 6, and that makes the day start 
in a little bit of a sticky kind of way. It feels a little humid out there, but I'll tell you what, it'll feel more so this afternoon as we have plenty of sunshine to boost our temperatures rapidly into the 80s and eventually hit the 90 degree mark. We'll probably top it out today at around 92, which is pretty close to where we were yesterday. Hit 91 yesterday. I think we'll be there by 3 p.m. We'll look for about a 30% chance of rainfall, slightly better than it was 24 hours ago. And that thanks to a little bit more moisture in the mid levels of the atmosphere to help support a few of these showers trying to work their way across the peninsula. Right now they tend to die out, but with a little daytime heating and this strong easterly wind flow, I suspect a few of them will make it into the area. We're looking at that slightly more moist air sinking southward across central Florida. Yesterday it was just filled with these tan colorizations of really dry air aloft and consequently we didn't get much rainfall around here. In fact, we had no spotters reporting any rainfall at their locations and radar only indicated a few scattered patches of drizzle around the Northport area, but uh, the Richard in Northport did not report any at his house. Uh, these, this area of moisture will be replaced in pretty short order by drier air tomorrow and so consequently uh, we'll probably even remove the rain chance completely from the forecast by tomorrow. High pressure, the dominant weather feature for us, bringing us that easterly wind today. Some cooler air locked back behind a cold front located to the north of us. And as we head into the afternoon, we'll look for mostly sunny skies to start clouding up a little bit. We'll get warm again today with those temperatures well above average, and we'll look for those few scattered afternoon showers. Forecast kind of shaping up like this. We'll have today an east wind coming in at about 5 to 10, increasing to 15 during the overnight. That will bring us two foot seas and a moderate chop on Bay and Inland Water. The good news is water temperature is starting to decrease a little bit. We're at 85, still kind of like bath water, but nevertheless on the decrease. A 2.30 low tide, that's the only one of the day. The next tide after midnight at 6.38 in the morning. That'll be our high tide, followed by another low tide tomorrow at 3.48. So one tide today, 2.30 in the afternoon. Forecast looks like this today. Top it out at around 92. We'll have about a 30% chance of showers. That little bit of moisture kind of swinging through the state. Tomorrow the moisture's gone and the rain chance is as well. We'll look for a daytime high that tops up even a little warmer, perhaps, coming in at about 93 degrees. It's going to be a really brutal afternoon for those folks who have to work outside, no doubt about it, tomorrow. And then as we head into Thursday, perhaps a, a better chance of rainfall is another little slug of moisture works its way through. Again, that'll be gone by the time we hit the weekend and we'll remove the rain chances on Saturday. Sunday, Monday, we'll bring them back, but still only minimal chances for showers, right? Thank you, John. Checking first alert traffic right now. Nothing major to report so far. Here's the current scene in Manatee County. Some issues there east of the interstate, way out in State Road 64 by Rye Road. You'll see some congestion there in both directions. Of course, they're also building a roundabout there now near the uh, uh, Greyhawks Landing after that fatal accident two weeks ago. Farther south, there's the scene in the northern half of Sarasota County. So far, pretty quiet. And then our south county map will show nothing much to speak of at 647 on this Tuesday morning. Entertainment news now. Another birthday for talk show hostess Kelly Ripa. A singer turns herself into police, and it's been one year now since the death of Tom Petty, and some new songs are still being released. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Hard to believe, but today it's been a year since the death of Tom Petty at age 66. The Rock and Roll Hall of Famer died suddenly last October 2nd of an accidental overdose. An expansive box set of his hits was released last Friday, including unreleased songs. Like the track Gainesville, which dropped a little over a week ago. Red Hot rapper and new mom, Cardi B, turned herself into police in New York Monday to face charges in connection with a bar fight. A police source tells ABC News, Cardi was one of 10 people who threw bottles and chairs during the August 29th brawl at a strip club in Queens. Police are checking into the possibility that Cardi's husband, the rapper Offset, was having an affair with one of the club's bartenders. Put my life out of dirt. That's a miracle. They've never had a song on the Billboard charts, but now they have a number one album. The hip-hop group Brockhampton is number one on the Billboard 200 album chart with their fourth record, Iridescence. The 14-member collective beat out Josh Groban's new album, Bridges. Groban actually sold more copies, but Brockhampton snatched the win by having more streams and sales combined. 
And happy birthday today to Kelly Ripa, the Live with Kelly and Ryan host turns 48, while The Sopranos and Goodfellas star Lorraine Bracco turns 64. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. A few weeks after her father's funeral, Senator John McCain's daughter will return to The View soon. Meghan McCain said in a tweet, she's, quote, getting back on the horse to return to the show next Monday. You can see that right here on ABC7. The holidays are still a few months away, but singer John Legend is already in the Christmas spirit. A legendary Christmas album will hit stores on October 26th. Also, a 25-day tour launches in mid-November in Clearwater, goes across the country, and wraps up in San Diego on December 30th. Songwriter Lin-Manuel Miranda wants to treat you to a trip to Puerto Rico if you give $10 or more through an account to help revitalize the arts in Puerto Rico. You could win a trip to San Juan to see Miranda reprise his Hamilton role back in his ancestral homeland of Puerto Rico. You'll even hit the after party with the cast and have a cooler story than any of your Hamilton-loving friends, all for a $10 donation. We'll have our top seven headlines before 7 a.m. next right here on ABC7. First, a peek outside at the sunrise in progress. You're watching Good Morning Suncoast. Your last chance for 2018 Honda Accords on sale is now during our model year in sale. Drive new Accords for just $249 a month. Get an Accord, the North American car of the year, for less than a competition. With more standard features than Camry, Honda Sensing, multi-angle camera, turbocharged engine, and more. New Accords, just $249 a month. Your last chance for Accords all on sale this week at your local Honda dealer. Chris Domine is a husband, father, an athlete, even an Iron Man. But 10 years ago, Chris's kidneys were failing. The doctor said, if you don't do dialysis, if you don't get a kidney transplant, you are going to die. Then Chris received a second chance, made possible by an organ donor. Your well-being changes from loss of hope to better times ahead. Imagine what you could make possible. Learn more and sign up as an organ, eye, and tissue donor. Go to organdonor.gov. Everybody can make something because I think everyone has a spark of creativity. And the reason that I have to keep making is because I don't think my life would be as fulfilling without it. If you make things yourself, that means you're not cowering in fear. You're out there taking chances. That, I think, is my way of saying I love you to the world. All right, now I want to hear why you make. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. A decade of war has taken an unprecedented toll on our men and women in uniform. Hundreds of thousands of our veterans are suffering from the trauma of war. At Justice for Vets, we believe that every veteran should have the opportunity for treatment and restoration. Get involved and go to justiceforvets.org. Help put treatment within reach of veterans in crisis. Veterans fought for our freedom. Now it's our turn to fight for theirs. So I kind of grew up all across the country. I come from five generations of military men. My dad is still active duty. My grandpa is retired Marines. I like going for runs with my dog. I love, you know, taking her out to the dog beach over in Venice. There are so many things here to do on the Sun Coast. My goal every day when I come into work at ABC7 is to tell your stories, give you that major local news and those details that you really care about. I'm Jacqueline Matter and I'm here for you. Serving part-time as a soldier in the Army National Guard can give you a head start on your career. Gain practical experience with technology and equipment to get an edge in the civilian world. Learn about the paid training and career opportunities available to you at NationalGuard.com. All right, welcome back. 6.53. Here are the top seven things you need to know before we go out the door at 7 a.m. First off, John Scalzi's first alert weather forecast. John? Yeah, we're looking at a pretty sunny start to the day, but there will be some clouds building in the second half of the afternoon as we see showers and thunderstorms. A few uh, begin to build. Maybe not so much thunderstorms, but a few scattered showers. 30% chance of that after a daytime high in the low 90s, right? Thank you, John. Interesting. Now, number two, this is unusual. We're hearing that there is a small sinkhole that's opened up on State Road 70 in eastern, uh, I believe that's Sarasota County, really close to the line there uh, between Verna and Mayaca City. So be aware of that. Looks like traffic has been stopped in both directions 
on State Road 70. You can see it right there. We'll update this in our next update at 725. Number three, some Sarasota residents upset about an arrest earlier this year. Plan to protest at police headquarters. They're concerned about two cases involving the same police officer. Number four, Democrats in the 17th Congressional District have now chosen a candidate uh, for next month's election. Alan Ellison of Highlands County will replace the late April Freeman, who suddenly passed away last week of an apparent heart attack. Ellison faces State Senator Greg Stubbe five weeks from today for Congress. Number five, Sarasota City Commissioners gave a local historic designation to the Selby House on the campus of Selby Gardens. William and Marie Selby built that house back in 1922. Number six, tonight is National Night Out in Northport. They'll have an event at City Hall. Residents can come by the City Hall for the uh, ceremony between 6 and 8.30 p.m. And finally, number seven, what's trending? Just because the shoe fits doesn't mean you can afford it, especially if it's this pair of $17 million heels. The Passion Diamond Shoe is being called the most expensive in the world. They are made of gold, leather, silk, and features nearly 250 diamonds with two massive 15 karat diamonds to boot as well. For now, they're on display at a hotel in Dubai, but the makers say custom-made shoes will be available, but you gotta pay up front. And hopefully both of our respective better halves are not watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's no question there. In Dubai, that seems like a good place to market those shoes, though, yes. I would think. A lot of wealth over there, indeed. One of the richest cities in the world. Yeah. So a small sinkhole on State Road 70 right now. How about that? It'll be interesting to investigate. What's the uh, root cause of that one? Yes, we'll send a crew out there right now and have details for you about uh, 725. But in the meantime, enjoy your Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Good morning, Sun Coast. And we'll see you again tomorrow morning.